The magic lamp. Narrow gauge engines work very hard. They puff and chuff all day up and down the hills. One day, the winding gear that carried coal trucks up and down the incline broke. The engines had to work extra hard, pulling heavy coal trucks up and down the long, steep track. Until, at the end of the day, they could ease their aching axles. That evening, Thomas puffed into the transfer yard. All the narrow gauge engines were there. Thomas was delivering steel winches and wires to repair the broken incline. Listen, Thomas, who said Rusty, Scarlo is telling us a story from the hills. Long, long ago, began Scarlo, there was an old engine called Proteus. His lamp was so bright you could see it for miles around. Proteus said it was a magic lamp. He promised that if any engine ever found a lamp, their wishes would come true. How would you know it was Proteus's lamp? asked Duncan. First, you feel a rush of wind whenever the lamp is near, Scarlowy chuffed quietly. Then you hear a strange creaking sound. And finally, he added, you'll see it flicker on and off, off and on. Peter Sam huffed loudly. I don't believe there's a magic lamp. Soon all the steel winches and wires were loaded into Peter Sam's trucks. I have work to do, huffed Peter Sam. I'm a really useful engine, not a really silly one. The incline must be working by morning, so I won't be wasting my time looking for a silly magic lamp, he tooted proudly, and he steamed quickly away. The moon was bright. Peter Sam huffed and puffed. The magic lamp I know isn't true. It's just an old story and quite silly too. Peter Sam clickety-clacked towards a junction. Suddenly, he felt a great rush of wind. His axles rattled and his couplings creaked. What's happening? Peter Sam whistled. He was so surprised he puffed right past the junction and up the wrong line away from the incline. Peter Sam still didn't believe Scarlowe's story about Proteus's magic lamp, but then he heard a creaking sound and his wheels began to wobble. Up ahead, a light flickered off and on, on and off. Then he saw it. It was just the Fogman's lantern. It creaked and croaked as it swung outside his cabin. Peter Sam felt better. He chuffed past. Peter Sam was now even further away from the incline. The magic lamp I know isn't true. It's just an old story and quite silly too. He huffed quietly to himself. Then suddenly, there was another rush of wind. Then a creaking sound. And finally, a flickering light. On and off, off and on. The wind, the creaking sound, and the flickering light. Could it be Proteus's lamp? Thought Peter Sam. Then he saw it. It wasn't Proteus's lamp. It was the light from a bonfire at the children's campsite. And it was the trees that were creaking in the wind. I knew that all along, sighed Peter Sam. But now he chuffed on even more slowly. Peter Sam was now at the bottom of a steep hill, and now he was completely lost. He didn't know what to do. I wish I could find the incline, and I wish I could be safe at home in the sheds with the other engines. And I wish, Peter Sam puffed quietly, I wish I could find Proteus's lamp. Perhaps then my wishes would come true. 
Suddenly he felt a rush of wind whip around his wheels. Then he heard the strangest creaking, croaking sound. And then he saw a flickering light that flashed on and off, off and on. It came from the top of the hill. Peter Sam gasped. It must be Proteus's magic lamp. He knew he had to go up the hill and find it. The wind whirred and stirred. The sound became a whooshing and a wheeshing and the light flickered brighter and brighter. Peter Sam puffed to the top of the hill. And there was Harold the helicopter. His blades made a wind that whirred and stirred. The sound whooshed and whooshed as the blades spun round. And Harold's bright light flickered on and off, off and on. Peter Sam was very surprised. Harold, he gasped. Hello, hummed Harold. I was dropping off some packages for the hill farms. What are you doing? I'm lost, Peter Sam said, and I'm going to be very late to deliver the winches and wires to the incline. No problem, old chap. I'll show you the way. And Harold took to the air. His strong light shone brightly and showed Peter Sam the right way to the incline. Later, on his way home, Peter Sam couldn't stop thinking about what had happened. Maybe, puffed Peter Sam quietly, you don't have to see the magic lamp for your wishes to come true. Maybe it's enough just to believe in it. Thomas and the Toy Shop. It was a bright, crisp winter's day on the island of Sodor. All the engines were hard at work carrying passengers and freight. Thomas was very excited. He had a special job to do. The toy shop was to have a grand opening for the winter holiday season. The workers at the toy factory had worked hard to make lots and lots of toys in time for the grand opening. Thomas's job was to take the toys from the factory to the toy shop. It was hard work, but Thomas was enjoying it. He felt really useful doing something so important. And he was looking forward to seeing the children's happy faces. On the day of the grand opening, the Fat Controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. A new machine for the toy factory has arrived, he said. Henry, I want you to pick it up from Brendam Docks and take it to the factory as soon as possible. And while you are there, he added, you can take the last load of toys from the factory to the toy shop. Thomas was disappointed. He thought that was his job. Maybe he could pick the children up after school and take them to the grand opening. But the Fat Controller gave that job to Emily. You are to do other jobs today, he told Thomas. Thomas hurried off to start his new jobs. But he was very sad not to be helping with the grand opening. The signal at the next station was red. Thomas stopped. The station master was waiting for him with a message. It was from the Fat Controller. Emily has broken down, said the station master. You must get all your jobs done as quickly as possible. Then you are to collect the children after school and take them to the toy shop. Thomas was sad for Emily, but excited to take the children. He puffed away quickly. There was a lot to do. Thomas was happy to be helping with the grand opening after all. He almost burst his boiler as he puffed around the island. At last, Thomas finished his jobs. He picked up Annie and Clarabelle and steamed off to collect the children. Thomas puffed through the docks. He was surprised to see Henry was still there. Then, Thomas saw that Henry was trapped by a large crate. 
What happened, Cranky? asked Thomas. That crate slipped off my hook, snapped Cranky crankily. Thomas was worried. Henry still had to collect the last load of toys from the factory for the toy shop. What if the toys arrive late for the grand opening, wished Thomas. The children will be very disappointed. I'll go as soon as the line's clear, huffed Henry. I know, puffed Thomas excitedly. I can collect the toys from the factory, then I'll pick up the children. You won't be able to pull all the trucks of toys as well as Annie and Clarabel, said Henry. Don't worry, Thomas whistled. I can do it. And he puffed quickly away. There was very little time left before the grand opening. Got to hurry, got to hurry, puffed Thomas. Doing our best, doing our best, chanted Annie and Clarabel. At last, Thomas reached the toy factory. He was coupled up to a long train of trucks and he set off for the toy shop. Thomas had been working hard all day and he wasn't used to pulling such a heavy load. It's very hard work, he puffed. You can do it, you can do it, sang Annie and Clarabel. Soon Thomas was steaming up Gordon's Hill. Must get to the top, must get to the top, he huffed. But he went slower and slower and slower. Until eventually he stopped altogether. I have to go on, wished Thomas. But he wasn't strong enough. The train started to pull Thomas backwards down the hill. He applied his brakes, but it didn't help. He slid all the way to the bottom. Thomas was very upset. I've let everyone down, he puffed sadly, especially the children. Just then he heard another engine coming. It was Henry. The workman had cleared the line at the docks. What's the matter, Thomas? Henry asked. Thomas told him. You were right, Henry, he said unhappily. This load was too heavy for me. I should have listened to you. And now I know I need your help. What can I do? chuffed Henry. You take the trucks to the toy shop, whistled Thomas. And I'll pick up the children. But we must hurry. Henry chuffed as fast as he could to the toy shop. Thomas puffed around the island as fast as he could. The children cheered when they saw him coming. You won't be late, he whistled as he steamed from station to station. And they weren't. Thomas arrived just in time for the grand opening. It was a magical sight. There were coloured lights, balloons and lots and lots of toys. The Fat Controller declared the toy shop open for the winter holiday season. Everybody cheered. Thomas was so pleased to see the children's happy faces. You were right, Henry. Thomas tooted, in future I shall leave pulling the heavy trucks to you. Saving Edward It was summertime on the island of Sodor. All the engines were working hard carrying goods and passengers. They cheerfully chuffed up and down the lines. All except Edward. Edward was worried. He wheezed as he puffed and steam hissed out of his cylinders. One morning, the Fat Controller came to the sheds. He had an important job for Edward. A special delivery of fruit and vegetables is coming to the docks today, he told him. I want you to take it to Knapford. Yes, sir, said Edward. But he was worried about his wheeze. It felt worse today. Thomas, 
You are to go to the docks and shunt Edward's trucks. After that, you can carry on with your usual jobs. Yes, sir, said Thomas eagerly. Thomas and Edward puffed up to the water tower. Edward tried to stop wheezing, but he couldn't. What's the matter? asked Thomas. You don't sound well. I can't seem to get up steam properly, said Edward. But I'll manage. Don't tell anyone, Thomas. Thomas wasn't sure about this. I don't want the fat controller to know, hissed Edward. Thomas could see Edward was worried, so he agreed. He hurried off to shunt Edward's trucks. Edward followed slowly to the docks. Edward was very worried. What if he was too weak to pull his train? He would be of no use to the railway. He wouldn't be useful at all. Edward shuddered at the thought. Must keep going, must keep going, he wheezed fearfully. At the docks, Thomas had shunted Edward's trucks into place for him. Soon Edward was coupled up and ready to go. Go on, Edward, you can do it, called Thomas encouragingly. Edward puffed as hard as he could, but the train hardly moved at all. I'm sorry, Thomas, Edward wheezed miserably. I'm not a really useful engine anymore. The fat controller will have to send me for scrap. Thomas was very upset. He wanted to help Edward. I'll do my other jobs first, he said. Then I'll pull the train for you. Edward watched Thomas puff away. He wasn't sure if it was right to let Thomas do his job. Edward felt very worried. Thomas needed to do all his jobs as quickly as possible so that he had time to pull Edward's train. Hurry up! Hurry up! He told the troublesome trucks. What for? What for? They snapped. For Edward, puffed Thomas, and he biffed them crossly. Edward waited sadly by his train. He hoped Thomas would come back soon. When Thomas finished all his jobs, he puffed back to collect Edward's train. Edward was very pleased to see him. Don't worry, Edward, puffed Thomas. I'll have your job done in no time. You go back to Tidmouth and I will meet you there later. Thank you, Thomas, wheezed Edward. And Thomas pulled away with a long line of trucks. Thomas was tired. He'd been working all day, and Edward's train was very heavy. But he was determined not to let Edward down. The fat controller was talking to Gordon as Thomas puffed in. Thomas, this train is late, he said crossly. And why are you pulling it? Where is Edward? Thomas didn't want to get Edward into trouble. He had to think of an excuse. Edward took on the wrong sort of coal, sir. The wrong sort of coal? Boomed the fat controller. What nonsense, Thomas. I'll find out what Edward has to say about this later. The fat controller was very cross. He gave Thomas another job to do. Yes, sir, said Thomas. Gordon left Knapford and steamed through the countryside. And then he found Edward having a rest. What's all this about the wrong sort of coal? huffed Gordon. Edward looked puzzled. Gordon told Edward all about Thomas and the Fat Controller. Edward felt very bad. He wanted to put things right. He decided he must go and see the Fat Controller straight away. 
Edward hissed and wheezed his way to the station. His fire felt feeble. His wheels felt weak, but he battled on. At last, Edward puffed into the station. He found the fat controller. It's all my fault, sir, he said sadly. I asked Thomas not to tell you I couldn't work. I was afraid of going for scrap. I'm very sorry. I should have talked to you this morning. Yes, said the fat controller. You should always tell me if you have a problem. You are a loyal, hard-working and really useful engine. I will send you to the fitter's yard straight away. Edward was very relieved. Thomas was very tired from his extra work. But they both agreed, even when it's hard, it's always best to tell the truth. Thomas tries his best. A fair was coming to the island of Sodor. All the engines were very excited. James took the merry-go-round. Edward and Henry took the giant wheel. And Percy took the bumper cars. But Thomas was the most excited of all. He couldn't wait for the fair to open that afternoon. He was looking forward to seeing the children's happy faces. He loved hearing their cries of laughter as they rode on the big wheel. But that afternoon, the fat controller gave Thomas a new job. He was to collect some chickens from a country station and take them to the docks. I am relying on you to deliver the chickens safely, Thomas, said the fat controller. Yes, sir, puffed Thomas. Thomas was sure he could get the job done in time to go and see the fair. But he was surprised to find the station empty. Farmer McCall's truck has a flat tyre, said the station master. He'll be here as soon as he can. Thomas waited and waited, but Farmer McCall still did not arrive with the chickens. What's wrong, Thomas? asked James. You don't look at all happy. I'm going to miss the fair unless Farmer McCall comes soon, huffed Thomas. James thought Thomas was silly to wait. I've just come past the fair, he said excitedly. All the children are arriving. You could rush over there before Farmer McCall arrives. That's a good idea, tooted Thomas. He was sure he could steam to the fair and back again really quickly. But as he hurried to the fair, Thomas started to worry. What if Farmer McCall arrived at the station when he wasn't there? What if a signal held him up on the way back? The fat controller would be very cross if Thomas was late. I mustn't let the fat controller down, said Thomas to himself, and he hurried back to the station. Thomas knew that this job was going to take a long time. He might miss the fair after all. At long last, Farmer McCall arrived with the chickens and Thomas was on his way. At the next station, Thomas told Gordon the whole story. You wouldn't have a problem if you were an express engine, huffed Gordon. You'd go really fast and get the job done in double-quick time like me. I'll be in time to see the fair. At that moment, the signals turned to green and Gordon raced off. I can go fast too, tooted Thomas, 
and he steamed off after Gordon. I will see the fair, I will see the fair. He huffed and he puffed as he sped down the track. Gordon's next signal was green. He dashed through it, but Thomas's signal turned red. Thomas screeched to a halt. The chickens in the vans flapped and squawked crossly. Thomas remembered that his job was to give them a safe and comfortable ride. Going fast was the wrong thing to do. So Thomas puffed along slowly and carefully. But he was sad. It was getting late and the fair was already well underway. At last, Thomas reached the docks. The chickens were safe and sound, but it was very late. Now Thomas knew he wouldn't get to see the children at the fair. He couldn't have felt sadder. Then the dock manager told Thomas there was an emergency. The generator at the fair has broken down, he said. So there are no lights and all the rides have stopped working. The children will be very sad, tutored Thomas. Cranky has just unloaded a new generator, the manager told Thomas. You must take it to the fair. The generator was heavy, but Thomas was determined to get it to the fairground as quickly as possible. He wanted everyone to have fun again. As he pulled into the station, Thomas saw crowds of children on the platform. All the children cheered when they saw Thomas. Well, John Thomas, said the fat controller, you have been a very useful and reliable engine. Soon the new generator started and the fairground lit up again. Everything sprang back to life. Thomas felt so proud and he gave a long toot as he watched the children having a wonderful time at the fair. Duncan and the Old Mine. It was summer on the island of Sodor. Duncan loved this time of year. Today he was especially excited. He was going to take a party of holidaymakers to see Caldy Caves. But Mr. Percival, the thin controller, had some bad news. The machines at the main coaling plant have broken down. The fat controller needs coal until they are mended. Mr. Percival told Duncan and Rusty to bring coal down from their mine in the hills. Then Thomas will take it to the coaling plant, he said. And, Mr. Percival added, Bertie the bus will take the holiday makers to Caldy Caves. Duncan was very disappointed. He wanted to go to the caves. Pulling coal trucks wasn't an exciting job at all. As Duncan was puffing slowly to the mine, he noticed an old line branching off into the trees and bushes. That looks like a good place for an adventure, said Duncan excitedly. I wonder what's down there. Duncan pushed his way through the barrier. Rusty was coming down the hill with trucks full of coal. He stopped when he saw Duncan. Look what you've done, Duncan, he hooted. Why did you break through the barrier? I wanted an adventure, Duncan wished quietly. This isn't the time for an adventure, tooted Rusty. We've got work to do. But Duncan didn't want to pull coal trucks anymore. All he could think about was having an adventure. So he puffed further down the line. Duncan clattered along the old line. 
Finally, the line disappeared into the side of the mountain. It looked like the entrance to an old mine. This is better than caves any day, he told himself excitedly. And he puffed inside. Duncan was too excited to think clearly. He puffed straight into a roof support. And suddenly, the roof collapsed behind him. Duncan was trapped. Oh, no, Duncan wished. How am I going to get out? Back at the transfer yard, Thomas was waiting. Where's Duncan? Thomas asked. I don't know, said Rusty. I'd better go and look for him. It was dark and lonely in the old mine. Duncan didn't like it at all. He looked up at the shafts of light. Maybe if I whistle, someone will hear me. Duncan whistled as loudly as he could, but there was no reply. He tried again, even louder. But Rusty didn't hear Duncan's whistle. He was too far away. No one knows where I am, wished Duncan miserably. I'll have to find my own way out. Duncan puffed slowly forward. Inch by inch, Duncan crept further into the mine. It was dark in the tunnel and getting darker. Then suddenly, he bumped into a set of buffers. Duncan could go no further. Now he was scared. I'm going to be stuck here forever, he whistled sadly. Rusty arrived at the broken barrier. Perhaps Duncan went looking for an adventure after all, he thought. Soon, Rusty came to the collapsed entrance. Duncan must be inside, he cried. Rusty was very worried. Duncan was still trapped. He puffed nervously backwards and forwards. He biffed the buffers again. This time, he heard a squeaking noise. I know what that is, he thought. It's the sound of wheels going round. Duncan edged forward very slowly. He hit the buffers again and pushed them carefully. They moved, and as they moved, the wheels squeaked. Duncan hadn't hit buffers at all. He had run into some trucks. If there are some trucks on this track, he thought, maybe it'll lead somewhere. He pushed the truck slowly forward along the track. Soon, he saw a light at the end of the tunnel. But the way out was boarded up. Must think clearly, must think clearly, he huffed to himself. Then he had an idea. With all his puff, Duncan bashed the trucks and they crashed and smashed through the boards. Duncan was free. I did it, he hooted happily. Rusty heard the crashing sound. He hurried on to see what it was. Soon he found Duncan. Where have you been, he cried. I had an adventure, puffed Duncan happily, and look what I found. Rusty could hardly believe it. Duncan was pushing trucks full of coal. Duncan and Rusty raced the trucks down the mountain to Thomas. Duncan and Rusty pulled into the transfer yards. Thomas was very happy to see them, and so was Mr. Percival. Duncan told Mr. Percival all about his adventure. Mr. Percival told Duncan he was very lucky. Duncan should not have broken through the barrier. Adventure can be full of surprises, Duncan, Mr. Percival told him. Some good and some not so good. Rusty and Thomas agreed. So next time I have an adventure, whistled Duncan, I will know to think clearly all the time. 
Thomas's day off. The engines on the island of Sodor were always very busy. They liked being busy. And no engine liked being busy more than Thomas. But sometimes, Thomas also liked to have a day off. One autumn morning, the fat controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. He had important news. A new diesel engine has arrived on the island, he boomed. His name is Dennis. You must all help him get to you know the Sodor Railway. And Thomas, added the fat controller, you have been working very hard. Today, you can have a day off. Thomas was very pleased. First, I will have a long washdown. Thomas chuffed cheerfully. Then I shall go to Bluff's Cove. On his way to the washdown, Thomas saw a diesel he had never seen before. The diesel was huffing and puffing. Hello, Thomas tooted. You must be Dennis. What's the matter? These trucks are too troublesome. I can't shunt them. It's my day off whistled Thomas, but I'll help you. This made Dennis very happy. Dennis watched Thomas biff and bump the trucks into line. All done, puffed Thomas. It was hard work and he was tired. Thank you, Thomas, oiled Dennis and he watched Thomas chuff away. Soon, Thomas was covered in bubbles. Shiny and bright, shiny and bright, that's what I'll be to start my day right, he chirruped cheerfully. Dennis wasn't cheerful. Dennis was lazy. He didn't want to deliver his trucks of tiles. Then he saw Thomas. Dennis had an idea. He would ask Thomas to help him again. Help, help, Dennis called weakly. Thomas slowed down. I don't know how to get to the schoolhouse, Dennis groaned. Don't worry, Dennis, Thomas puffed. I'll show you the way. Dennis smiled. His trick had worked. So Thomas showed Dennis the way to the junction. The schoolhouse is further along that track, wished Thomas. Dennis watched Thomas puff away. Dennis had wanted Thomas to take his trucks for him. Suddenly, Dennis had another idea. He blasted his horn again and again. Thomas heard the noise. He was worried. Dennis watched Thomas come back. His new trick had worked. Now, Dennis would pretend to have something wrong with him. Help, Dennis cried. I'm overheating. You'll have to shunt these trucks for me. Thomas knew it was his day off, but he still wanted to help. Don't worry, puffed Thomas. I'll find another engine to help you, on my way to Bluff's Cove. Dennis was cross. He wanted Thomas to shunt his trucks. Dennis decided to leave his trucks. Then another engine will have to take them, he thought. So Dennis raced away. He didn't care about the tiles. He didn't care about Thomas. All he cared about was getting far away from his work. His wheels were spinning faster and faster. Then there was trouble. Help, called Dennis. Help, help. But this time, there was no one there to help. Thomas arrived at a signal. Percy had some important news. 
The workmen are waiting for Dennis to bring the tiles to repair the school roof. The children can't go to school until it's mended. And no one knows where Dennis is, Percy added. I do, wished Thomas. He's broken down. I must go back to help him right away. Thomas quickly found Dennis. Thomas was very surprised. I thought you broke down at the junction, wished Thomas. And where are the trucks of tiles? Dennis looked very shamefaced. I tricked you, said Dennis quietly. There was nothing wrong with me at the junction. I just didn't want to pull those heavy trucks. I'm a really lazy engine, moaned Dennis. Dennis's wheels wobbled, and his diesel oil dripped. Now Thomas could see that Dennis really was in trouble, so Thomas decided to help one more time. I'll pull you back onto the tracks, Thomas puffed. Then I'll be your back engine. That way we'll get the tiles to the schoolhouse in double quick time. Dennis smiled his biggest smile ever. Dennis and Thomas finally pulled into the schoolhouse station. The fat controller was waiting. Janish, you have caused confusion and delay, he boomed. Dennis felt bad. Thomas has shown me that being a really useful engine is much better than being really lazy, Dennis wheezed. The fat controller was pleased. Thomas was pleased too. Thank you, Thomas, Dennis hooted. From now on, I will try to be a really useful engine.